What's up guys? Russell here with Texas Young Guns and the quarantine has us being efficient or it's allowing us to have time to work on projects on Blue Bonnet. Uh, that's the RV that we introduced you to, our newest rig. Um, and it is uh, this time togetherness, this alone time uh, is giving us the opportunity to work on a lot of projects and today is a big one. So uh, I didn't make a video on it, but when we first got Blue Bonnet on our maiden trip, we had some overheating issues, uh, which I had to investigate. And through that investigation, uh, we discovered that our AC compressor was locked up. Um, and what had happened is uh, the clutch completely just locked up, wouldn't turn. Uh, the serpentine belt that was trying to turn around it uh, was basically turning on uh, a wheel that wouldn't turn, an idler that wouldn't turn. So eventually the belt burned up, it snapped. Uh, so the serpentine belt turns multiple things. It turns our alternator, um, it turns our AC compressor, um, and most importantly, it turns the fan. Uh, that's right, the cooling fan. So luckily we were able to limp home by doing like 30 miles an hour. Um, it took us longer, but we were fortunate enough. We were able to uh, limp Blue Bonnet at home. We didn't have to call a wrecker or anything like that. Uh, which is very fortunate for us. But what it meant was is uh, not only did I have to change the serpentine belt that just snapped, uh, but I also had to change the AC compressor, which means I had to get the uh, refrigerant sucked out responsibly, uh, environmentally responsible. You know, that's how we roll here at Texas Young Guns. Uh, I had to do a lot of engine work, which was not expected after first getting a, well, new to us RV, but uh, with the territory of buying a used RV, you never know what you're gonna get, whether it's a motorhome uh, or a trailer. So all that work is done, and now we're at the phase where we need to uh, resupply the AC system, the dash air with refrigerant, and we're gonna try to do it correctly um, as a DIY. So that's the kind of guy that I am. Um, you could probably pay somebody to do it. You know, they'll, they'll charge you the labor for an hour or two uh, depending on if you have any issues, so you can guess that it's probably sixty, hundred dollars an hour, maybe even north of a hundred dollars an hour. I've seen as much as like one twenty. Um, so you're probably going to pay an hour or two of labor, uh, plus the free on that they're going to upcharge. Uh, now the convenience of getting it done by somebody is definitely there, uh, but like I said, I'm a DIY kind of guy, uh, so I'm going to attempt to do it myself. Now one of the negatives about doing an RV yourself um, is that RVs. Uh, tend to take a lot of Freon uh, because you know they have to run the link to the RV the compressors in the back um, your dash is in the front so ours is the 39 so you got to figure out at least 39 feet of uh, hose for your system so a car might take one two pounds uh, maybe more I guess in rare scenarios an RV is going to take probably at least a minimum of four uh, pounds of refrigerant and they usually come in like 12 ounce cans as a standard so there's 16 ounces in a pound so do the math there on how many cans you're gonna have to buy now this this task can be intimidating it can be intimidating but just know you can do it yourself um, and also know that if you have any issues uh, in other words you have an issue with your system this is not something that this is not a process you use to fix your system this is assuming that your system works um, you don't have any leaks. Um, this is basically just refilling your AC system. But with that said, let's uh, see what I got going on so far. All right, so we got old blue bonnet. Notice here I'm already hooked up, but I'll explain to you what all I have hooked up here. And of course, I'll link all the stuff that I purchased in order to do this uh, below in the comment. So once you've watched this video um, and you like and subscribe to our channel, of course, uh, you can go down there and find out where I got it. It's all off of Amazon, basically. I'm a Amazon junkie, uh, admittedly, so that's where I got it from. Okay, so what you'll need is a set of, uh, you'll need a manifold. Uh, you'll need a vacuum pump. You'll need your refrigerant. Um, and make sure when you purchase a manifold, the one I got came with this adapter. Um, and what this adapter does is it screws into the top of your refrigerant um, and allows you to fill up your system uh, with this valve. Now your pump is gonna come dry if you're just using it for the first time. So what you need to make sure you do is unscrew your exhaust and fill up with oil. And there's a little sight glass on the side that shows you how much is in it. 
and you do not want to run this dry because this system will use oil uh, that's how compressors vacuums work like this so um, it's a continual maintenance item and just make sure you have some on hand okay let's look and see what i got going on with the manifold so with the manifold you have two sides so you have your high pressure and your low pressure side you'll notice on the red end there is a lot greater range of numbers and that's psi and this is for your high pressure side your blue or the other side is going to be your low pressure that's why you see a bunch of lower numbers here and of course you'll have your two valves for each side and then you'll have a little sight glass here on most manifolds where you can see as you're filling up your system with refrigerant you'll see it going in um, and then when you're trying to get the little last drops out of your uh, your 134a little cans you can see make sure you get all you can out of them and then from your manifold you'll be running your lines and you'll have your low pressure side and your high pressure side now don't worry you can't screw these up because the high pressure and low pressure sides have two different size of fittings so if you were to try let's say if you were to try to put your low pressure side on the high pressure side it won't work because one is bigger than the other so don't worry about this stuff you cannot screw it up but you will need to locate these now i can't tell you where your hookups are for hooking up your lines uh, but my guesstimate is is that Fleetwood was not reinventing the wheel here. Uh, I imagine that they put them in the front just like uh, any other manufacturer would do. But of course, there's so many out there. I can't tell you for sure where yours is, but that's where I would start um, is in the front hood area here. And most likely that's where yours are as well. Okay, so we have our manifold hooked up. And the yellow line here, this third line, is where you're going to be running your vacuum. And that's also where you're gonna be filling up your refrigerant. So we have run this yellow line down to our vacuum pump here. Now, one last thing to note before you get started is when you hook these lines in, you wanna make sure the valve is closed. Okay, that because as soon as you try to hook that valve on, it's gonna release pressure, whatever pressure is in your system. Uh, if you need to have any pressure left. Um, and note that on these valves, it might be backwards. So uh, right, and tight might actually be open in these which is backwards from what i know most things um, and left is going to be closed so just make sure that these are closed when you hook them up also make sure that these valves are closed um, as well when you hook up the system it's a good idea just to have the system closed when you're hooking everything up um, and slowly introduce pressure uh, to the system when you're ready okay so step one is once you have everything hooked up the whole system is closed you'll want to come to these valves and open them so we'll do that and you also want to open this side as well look who's showing up to project manage again hey I just did my project I put new mulch in the flower beds I was just telling our audience uh, how much time we have with this quarantine a lot but a lot of projects are getting done yeah all right, you'll see as I've opened the valves that we have zero pressure, which is what we've expected because, you know, I just replaced the compressor and had the system evacuated. Uh, so, of course, I was expecting zero pressure. But, like I said, if your system has any pressure at all, because uh, you can also do this as a proper way of refilling your system um, if you have it still going, you know, just to add some refrigerant if you would like. So, zero is what I was expecting. Um, and the next thing we're going to do, since we do have it hooked up to the vacuum, is to go ahead and open up these valves. And we're gonna to wanna to open up both sides. Okay, so with your high pressure side and your low pressure side open, the system in your RV is now uh, exposed to everything in your manifold and it's now the yellow line is exposed to your vacuum. Um, so now you're ready to read pressures and you're ready to proceed to the next step. And actually your next step is to pull a vacuum on the system. And what this is gonna do um, is one, it's gonna check for leaks. Um, and it's also going to pull moisture um, out of your system. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so since your system is fully open, we'll now turn on the vacuum. And you'll immediately see the low pressure side you'll start to go into the negatives, which is good because it means you're pulling vacuum. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to watch it um, and you'll want about, you know, 30 vacuum here. 30 inches of vacuum. 
We actually start to see, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually, you can see the moisture coming out of the vacuum. I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually exhaust has moisture coming out, which is a good sign. As the vacuum's running here, you can hear in the background, I can actually smell some old refrigerant uh, that was left in the system coming out of the exhaust. Um, so that means we're getting some of that moisture, some of that old refrigerant out of the system, uh, which is a good thing. You want all brand new stuff. All right, so now we've got about 30 inches of vacuum, which is about what we want. So before you turn the vacuum off, you're gonna wanna close these valves here. Okay, so these valves are closed, both valves are closed, and we'll wanna turn off the vacuum now. So with the vacuum off, you wanna immediately come back up and look at your gauges. And you see we're holding steady at about 30 inches of vacuum. And what, if you immediately, once you've done this step, if you start to see the needle go back to zero, that means you have a major leak, a major leak, a major problem. And you'll wanna to have to address that. You'll notice that I'm actually wearing gloves, um, and that's because even though my system doesn't have any refrigerant in it, uh, I'll eventually be dealing with it when I put it into the system. Um, refrigerant's really bad for you guys. Really protect yourself. So not only wear gloves, but wear glasses. So you'll want to watch this, uh, and at this step, you want to watch it for a few minutes, and if you don't have any major leaks, we'll want to proceed on to the next step. So the next step, guys, is to actually let this sit for a while and what you're wanting to do is is you're wanting to make sure that you're not leaking down you know because um, most people will have a slow leak you, you never notice that over a long period of time you'll lose refrigerant well that's what you're searching for here so you need to let this sit um, for about you know 30 45 minutes whatever you want go do another errand run an errand uh, go do another task uh, but you know to do this properly this is when you need to have patience let the system sit and see if you have any leaks. Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes. Let's check the gauge here. We're still holding about 30 inches of vacuum. Excellent, that's very good. That means I have no leaks. The compressor change I did was good. Um, and now it's time to proceed on to the next step, which will be making sure that moisture is out of the system. To do that, we'll actually run the vacuum for an extended period of time. So what you'll want to do is turn on the vacuum. In order not to lose your vacuum, you want to turn on the vacuum first um, and then reopen these valves, reintroduce the vacuum to the system. So open up your low pressure side and then reopen up your high pressure side. And you'll want to let this run um, for at least 30, 45 minutes. And what this will do is uh, help get the rest of the moisture out of the system. Because honestly, um, if you skip this step, you're wasting your time because eventually moisture will uh, rot out your system and you'll start to have leaks. So I know this is uh, probably longer than what, what you're wanting to do, but to do it properly, you really need to not skip this step. So at this point, we've been running it for about 45 minutes. I feel comfortable there's no more moisture coming out, so we can go ahead and shut these valves. Both valves, the high pressure and the low pressure side. And just like before, after you've closed these valves, you can come down here and shut off the vacuum. And once again, just make sure that you're holding your vacuum, that you don't have any major leaks. And at this point, with the steps that we've done, we're basically done with the vacuum. So at this point, you can unhook the vacuum line. Now, don't let the whooshing of air scare you if there is any, because remember, you've been pulling a vacuum, so it's just air being reintroduced into the yellow line. Uh, in our case, we didn't have any, so. Now, the proper thing to do um, is to get a valve that will be in between here and here um, and it's a bleeder valve because what happened is is now that we've unhooked this yellow line from the vacuum pump you've now reintroduced air back into this yellow line now it's not much air 
but it is air. So the next step, which is going to be putting a refrigerant in, um, we're going to reintroduce a little bit of air back into the system, which is not ideal, but can't be helped in this scenario. So if you're buying a set of manifolds, um, see if it doesn't have a bleeder valve back up at the manifold, which will help you in this scenario. Hey guys, real quick before we go on to the next step, I just wanted to make sure you knew that if you call your manufacturer for your specific RV, they will tell you how many ounces or pounds your system will need exactly. That way it makes these steps so much easier and all you're going to do is add the specific amount of refrigerant that your manufacturer tells you to um, and that's all you'll need to do. Uh, on another note, your compressor might be pre-oiled but most likely for an RV that oil is not going to be enough. You're going to need to add oil here which you'll do through that yellow vacuum line. For example, my compressor only came with 5.6 ounces, which was fine for the compressor, but with the extended amount of hose you have in your RV, I will have to add another 5 or so ounces to my system, which will most likely be similar to yours. Um, and that's if your compressor came with oil at all. Most do, but some don't. So please make sure before you continue on that you know what you need and what kind of PAG oil you need for your system. Now I'm going to use AC Pro and for the first couple of bottles that I put in I'm going to use this first charge. Now the compressor I put in was already pre-oiled so I didn't have to add any which is really nice. But this will lubricate new compressors, absorb moisture and all that. Um, so like I said the first two of these bottles that I put in I'll be using this first charge. Um, and let's go ahead and hook it up. Now like I mentioned earlier you'll need to have this valve which uh, most manifold sets like this one come with but you do want to make sure that it has it if not then you're going to be stuck at this step because you're going to have no way of hooking that line up to your bottle down there so at this point you'll want to have this valve available now this valve is a two-part valve it's not only a valve to control the intake of uh, refrigerant but it's also a piercer so right now it's in the closed position if I were to leave it like that as soon as I were to hook it up to the bottle um, it would start coming out there which would be a bad thing so we're actually going to loosen it up and make sure that needle's not where it's going to pierce the bottle. Okay so now the valve is in the open position and you can see the piercing needle has retracted and we're now ready to hook it up to our bottle. Okay the valve is on the bottle. Yep, it's tight. It's in the open position. That way the bottle is not pierced. Um, and it's time to hook it up to the yellow line. Okay, so now the bottle is hooked up to the yellow line. Remember that those valves are closed at the, ma at the manifold. And we're ready to charge the system. But first, we need to go start the RV. Also, real quick, on these, the all these fittings, do not use a wrench. Let the gasket do the work. Only hand tighten it. Do not use a wrench on these. You do not need to hunker down on these. The gasket will do the work for you. All you'll do is end up breaking something. All right, so going to start the RV. Now the RV has been sitting for a little bit, so I'm sure it's lost most of its air, so don't be alarmed by the, the sirens. It's just telling me that it's low air. Yep, see the low, low air. Okay, so the low air light is off. Um, and the next step is gonna be is to turn the compressor on. I also installed a gauge that we can watch during this whole process. And that gauge will tell us what temperature the air is coming out of so we can see our progress. All right, so now the important step here is you'll wanna turn the air to the on position onto the low setting. And more importantly, you'll want to make sure that the AC is on. So I think my light is burnt out, but I do know that when it's, um, you know, it's sticking out when it's in, that means the AC is on. It's very important because you'll want the compressor to kick on. And you'll want it on the coldest setting, obviously. I also have this nifty gun here. And pointing out, looks like it is about coming out about 70 degrees. So now we're back at the front of the RV. And now we will pierce the can. So both valves are closed at the manifold. Still holding vacuum. We'll come down here with it hooked up to the yellow line, making sure that it's hand tight. We'll go ahead and start closing this valve. 
and we'll pierce the can. Now, interesting to note, when you actually pierce the can, it's actually closing the valve. So even though you are piercing the can, the valve will also be closed at the same time. And so no refrigerants being introduced into the system. Okay, so now we're at 30 inches of vacuum, like I said. The can is closed. We will go ahead and open up your gauge, your low pressure gauge. Do not touch the hide. Do not touch this one. You will slowly open up. And you'll see it jump because it took air from the low pressure side briefly. We'll go ahead and open up the low pressure side. Now that the low pressure side's opened up, remember the system is still under a vacuum. So next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and add the refrigerant to the system. And remember when you open the refrigerant up, do not do it quickly. You want to do it slowly because if you do it too quickly, the 134A will turn into a liquid and you might damage your system. So crack the valve. And you'll see And you'll start to see that the system is now sucking some of the refrigerant out of the bottle. And you see as I move the bottle around to try to get the last little bit, so you can see how some refrigerant is now being sucked in more through your side glass. And you can see the pressure starting to increase. And you can see now as I move around the bottle to get the last little bits out, that the system is starting to suck in some air. And you can see it's still sucking it in through the sight glass. That when you're adding refrigerant, that the high pressure side will slowly start to come up. You can see I'm turning the bottle open down, trying to get the last little bit out of it. Nothing else is coming through the sight glass and the pressure isn't changing anymore. So I feel confident that this bottle is empty. Let's connect this bottle to get to the next one. Make sure you close, make sure you close the low pressure side. line is isolated and closed via this valve on top and it's safe to unscrew the bottle the white bottle of refrigerant now be careful when you unscrew it because there might be a little bit of pressure remember I told you this stuff is nasty so uh, be responsible to yourself and also to the environment and be careful in case you didn't get all the pressure out of it so just like before before you unhook this valve make sure your valve up there is in the closed position on the lower pressure side to isolate this yellow line Okay, so the new bottle is on, and just like before, we've closed the valve and pierced the can. And just like before, if you had a purge valve, now is the time to purge it of air. And we will slowly open up the low pressure. And back at the bottle, remember to slowly introduce the refrigerant into the system. Okay, so we are continuing to add bottles of Freon into the system. So you can see this is where we're at. There's a blower motor in the back starting to kick on and off. That's a good sign. That means the system's recognizing the pressure. Oop, there goes the compressor turning on. You see how the pressure comes down over here? The pressure goes up over here. All right, and we are about six bottles in, which means we're about four and a half pounds in. And just for good measure, Oh yeah, 50 degrees, 55 degrees, somewhere in that range. Excellent. Another way to make sure everything's working, and you'll have to excuse the engine noise, but to go ahead and see and make sure that the compressor is actually turning on. And that'll tell you that you're getting the pressure high enough, uh, and at least for the compressor to turn on. see what temperature we are at now oh yeah we're almost there got about 50 degrees coming out about 51 right now so that last bottle definitely lowered it 
So the temperature, in fact, the project manager right there, <laughs> she's checking on progress of the project, uh, true project manager style. But we're at 50 degrees on the AC temperature. I think we could probably get it a little lower based on the pressures. We're probably a bottle short, so I'll have to go get some. But I think by now, you pretty much have what the process is and what you're looking for. And guys, please, when you are recharging your RVs AC, please consult your manufacturer. I know Fleetwood for us, uh, they have a number you can call and ask questions like this. I think every manufacturer does. Please do so and they will tell you the exact amounts. Um, they'll tell you what pressures, they'll tell you everything instead of playing a guessing game if you're not very familiar with recharging AC systems. Now a couple of things I have learned through this process that you can learn through me is guys remember this is an RV. It's gonna take, like I mentioned earlier, quite a lot of refrigerant to get it recharged. Um, even Especially since I evacuated the whole system. So keep that in mind that it may take a few bottles before your fan and compressor even click on because it takes quite a bit of bottles to go from the front to the back like I mentioned earlier. Uh, with that being said, I had a little freak out moment earlier. Um, so a relay inside kept clicking and clicking and clicking and apparently it was because I was right on the cusp um, of the minimum required pressure and it was trying to kick on the fan but it wasn't quite seeing the pressure it needed and it was freaking me out because I thought I had a relay blown. Um, but it turns out I didn't and everything was fine. So that's why you saw earlier in the video, you made a notice the center console was open. Uh, but that was a lesson learned for me and I'm sure you'll learn lessons on yours. Uh, just have the confidence to get it done. Uh, start hitting up communities for your RV and I'm sure they'll help you out too. Uh, just like me personally, I'm part of the Discovery Owners Group um, in Texas and also nationally, United States. Uh, but like I said, I hope this helped you out and get out there and RV. See you on the next video. Bye.